Reflections from Torch Trust, focusing on Christian faith and sight loss. Hello and a warm welcome to Reflections, the show from Torch Trust that focuses on faith and disability in today's world. I'm your host, Marilyn Baker, and it's wonderful to be with you this morning. Our guest today lost his sight four years ago in a completely unexpected way and for some time his very survival was in doubt. Now, however, he's flourishing due to the support of his wife, his faith and his surprising return to a beloved passion. Our producer Grace spoke with Heinrich and Irene Barth about their incredible story. Heinrich and Irene, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, first of all, I just wanted to ask, um, you're not originally from the UK um, and uh, you're from America, is that right? <laughs> yes, that's right, New York State, yeah. All oh, right, okay. And um, so your, your sight loss actually happened while you were back in America. Um, yeah. Do you mind telling me a bit about that, a bit about how it happened? Sure, I'll do my best. So uh, four years ago, um, actually I have to start a weekend before I lost my sight. And um, and for the first time in a dozen years, our family all got together. And it was the most wonderful weekend. Our five children were home. Everything worked perfectly. It was somehow a blessed weekend. And uh, we knew a bit later why, but it seemed like uh, God just shone his light on us and, and gave us such a wonderful time together. Mm -hmm. um, and our children left on a Monday. And the following Monday, um, we had a beautiful evening together at some friends. And um, Irene was tired and went to go to bed. And uh, I just went outside to the beautiful moon that, that night. And I went out up to the porch. And I remember just sitting there watching the moon set or come up over the uh, hillside. And I was thinking about the weekend we just experienced. And it was so awesome to just realize that there is a good God looking after everything. And at one point, um, I lost my memory. And uh, Irene could pick up the story here because I have no memory for over a month. Oh, and that's uh, when a cerebral aneurysm burst in my brain. But that was only discovered weeks later. In fact, the pieces were put together to um, understand what had happened to me. But through that um, cerebral aneurysm and then uh, traumatic brain injury caused by a fall, um, when I completely lost consciousness, um, yeah, through that I lost my eyesight and hearing and uh, life changed. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Irene, I can't imagine what that must have been like uh, for you as well to kind of find your husband suddenly in this situation. Yeah, it was a very, it was a very difficult night um, and following months as, you know, Heinrich's life was really um, between life and death and he was given a, a less than 1% chance of surviving. But um, thanks to God and thousands of prayers really all over the world. Um, He's here today and and actually with far more doing far more than the doctors ever thought he would but it has it has been a huge life-changing um time all these you know four and a half years for both of us because there was a lot of catching up to do Heinrich had no idea what had happened to him and um you know he's left still with the the brain injury part that has been you know, it's been tough in our marriage and and then the sight loss as well, but we're uh, slowly figuring it out. And so we came over here to be with our grandchildren, which is, has been a really wonderful thing. It was a tough move, but it's been a blessing. So, Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and the blessing has been in things like the relationship with the Torch and uh, other organizations mm -hmm. and just people we've met along the way that... Um, you just solidify the, the assurance that God is here too and has been in the storm of uh, survival and recovery. And, uh, you know, reminds me at this moment of that, the story of the disciples in the boat with Jesus sleeping at the helm. Um, they were oblivious to Jesus' presence in a way. 
until they were certain they were all going to drown. And uh, they called upon him, woke him up, and he brought calm in an instant, but challenged them, where is your faith? And we've had that moment a few times. Where is our faith when, when uh, calamity strikes? And do we still believe that God is present, guiding, and steady, and will be with us, is with us always? Yeah, that's not always easy, is it? And No, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. And um, so do you mind if I ask both of you, how, how did you come to faith? Um, I was born into a uh, Christian family in a um, community fellowship of uh, brothers and sisters. I had 11 brothers and sisters. Wow. And my parents, um, like everybody, had their challenges, but faith and uh, trust in God and love to Jesus was something that came through my parents, sometimes most at difficult moments. Um, and I never doubted the... Uh, the presence of God in my life and always from youth on wanted it in some way, use my life to do good. Mm. And um, then through high school, life became interesting. And in college, I wasn't completely certain all the time, but through seeing the hollowness of many other people's lives, I decided um, there had to be more. And I committed my life to Jesus and to the church. And um, that was, um, has been a, a rock to turn back to again and again. And I similar, like Heinrich was born into, we're, we're part of a Christian community. Um, it's known as the Bruderhof. So we were both born into that. And so my whole life has been, you know, in that atmosphere but I think my, so I lost my mother when I was 10, um, leaving my dad with eight of us little kids. And that definitely affected my life tremendously. And then, um, and I knew in a, at an early age that just the relationship with Jesus was very tangible and real for my, for my dad, for my parents. Um, and I, I always, wanted to be part of this community um definitely had my challenging teenage years like i think everyone does but uh that faith as a child has definitely held me through many difficult times including cancer and other things along the way and then just latest thing with timers so yeah yeah <laughs> Wow. And um, so I, I also wanted to ask Heinrich about your photography. Um, I've been on your photography website. I absolutely oh, yeah. love it. <laughs> oh, it's lo I, lo I love landscape photography. I love the, the gentle mist rolling over the fields. It's gorgeous. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, so I just wanted to ask, so I know on your website, I know it says how you, you had already been doing photography for many years, yeah. um, but you kind of came back to it after getting a, do a guide dog. Do you mind telling me how, how did that happen? I'd love to. Um, so I have done in the past, prior to losing most of my sight, wedding photography and a lot of and some commercial photography, all very um, kind of busy, um, kind of fun, um, but always very driven to do better. And then um, after losing my sight, I figured that chapter in my life was closed and I'd have to pick up other things. But a year ago, I was here in England and um, looking at a, a tree with a sun behind it and I picked up a camera and took some pictures of it and took a few pictures and then I showed them to Irene later. And actually in the picture I saw a, a, a bigger vista than I could see um, with my eyes looking at the scene itself. You're here with the grace of the Savior, with the heart of the Father. You're all we need. You're here with the hands of the healer, 
With the power of your spirit, you're all we need. At the mention of your name, every chain will break. I know everything will change. Jesus, just the whisper of your name will silence wind and waves at the mention of your name. And that was a lovely worship song sung by me, the mention of your name. We'll be hearing the last part of Heinrich and Irene's interview very soon. But first, I want to share with you about an initiative taking place next week. This year, Torch has decided to become part of the annual Big Give Campaign's Christmas Challenge. To participate, Torch was asked to set a minimum goal of £1,000 and obtain pledges for that amount. This made us eligible to be matched by a corporate sponsor called a champion and we were indeed matched by the Together Fund. All this means that every donation we receive in the challenge week, up to a total of £2,000, will be doubled. 
anyone can be a donor during the week of the 28th of November to the 5th of December. Donations must be given through the Big Give for the matching to take effect. If you are able and feel that you would like to support Torch in this way, please do visit their website biggive.org slash Christmas hyphen challenge during the campaign week. That's the 28th of November to the 5th of December to make a donation. If you don't feel able to donate and would like to support Torch's work, your prayers are always very much appreciated and we know how much impact they have. And if you do want to donate and you don't want to use a website, you can always call the client services team. We'll give you the number at the end. Now, let's go back once more to Grace's interview with Heinrich and Irene Barth. Even now, it, within um, any given um, scene that I photograph, I can only see one small part of it. Mm -hmm. And so I shoot it many different ways. And I'm amazed myself at the um, miracle of some of the creation that comes through. And all I want to do is give glory to God and realize that through the challenges I face, and I think every human faces, one runs into conflict with um, just wondering where is God when everything can go so badly wrong. Well, he is here, he is present, he is visible in the sun, in the moon, in the trees, in the um, seas, in the landscape, in the storm. And I really enjoyed photographing things like a rainbow that came out of a, you know, a storm. And uh, in it, seeing God's promises, and we can lose sight of it so quickly. But uh, I've, in the last couple of months, I've been working on a calendar for 2024 and uh, found some of the most wonderful pictures or ones that mean the most to me, starting with January, with an open gate, frosty gate from our garden onto a footpath and saying, you know, I want to start next year this way. We're going to just head down this path and see where it takes us. And following months unfold with... Um, a big oak tree with no leaves on it, but the sun shining on it and thinking, oh, that sun is actually waking up the buds. You know, it's going to, a new creation is starting here. And um, pictures of the sea looking out the horizon and thinking, this is eternity. God has a purpose for today and into all eternity for each of us. And what that will mean in our lives and what that bridge is like when we pass from this world to the next, we don't know when or what, but we do know it's in God's loving hand and he wants the best for us forever. The smile photography is a, a mission and a vision mm. for me and, and has been for the two of us as we find ways to use photographs to bring glory to God. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. That's something the two of you work on together as well. So it's not just your thing. It's a, it's another thing sort of pulling you together. That's wonderful. Irene's one of the, the my first editors. So she deletes at least half of my photographs, <laughs> the ones that are out of focus and completely useless. <laughs> There's a lot of distilling that has to happen. Ah, oh, that's that's good. That's wonderful. So are you, are you into photography, Irene? Is it something you... No. Oh, no. Not a problem. <laughs> no, I took it in high school. That's about where it ended. Oh right. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so this is a new thing for you then. <laughs> yes. And um, so, if if our listeners would like to buy the calendar, how can they do that? Well, my website is uh, shotwhileblind.com, and there you'll see greeting cards and prints that I have been selling for about a year. Um, and the calendar will be the first thing on that page within the next week or so. As soon as I have it, I'll get photographs up there. Um, and I really hope listeners um, just look at it. And if you can be inspired by it, oh my, what that means um, to me in terms of purpose through the journey of life. And um, I feel like these beautiful pictures are just um, little places where God touches down 
touches the earth, a, a flower blooms, the sun shines, a rainbow appears. And this is happening around us every day, regardless of the other challenges that um, come. Yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, that's that's really brilliant. Thank you for sharing all of that with me. It's, it's really, really lovely to talk to you both. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, I'm sorry to say that we're all out of time for today. Remember, if you'd like to see Heinrich's photography or purchase any of his work, including his 2024 calendar, just go to shotwhileblind.co.uk shotwhileblind.co.uk If you'd like to leave us a comment, question or song suggestion, then please do get in touch. Thank you to the listener who recently called in because they loved the sound of the Advent reading we discussed back at the start of November. The number to call if you want to get in touch with us is 01858 438 260. That's 01858 438 260. You can also email info at torchtrust.org. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Just search for Torch Trust. Until next week, from me, Marilyn and everyone on the Reflections team, goodbye and God bless. You've been listening to Reflections from Torch Trust.